Welcome everyone to the 10,000 subscriber special. And before we start, I just want to offer a sincere thank you for everyone who has liked the videos, commented, subscribed, supported the channel over the years, interacted with me and just got involved with the channel, providing suggestions, asking questions, and even getting in contact with me because I really appreciate it and I wish more of you can reach out to me. So in the description below, you can look at my link tree and there's my Instagram on there, which you can follow me. And if there's any conversation or question you have, just send me a DM, it's totally fine. So here we go, let's begin. The 10,000 subscriber special where I reveal everything. My first guitar lesson was the 2nd of November, 2006. So it's been just slightly over 15 years since I started playing guitar. I remember it was, it was in my first year of high school and um, it was just one of those school lessons. It wasn't like a private lesson or anything. It was just one of those, you know, 20 minute sessions that you have with a guitar teacher at school. The reason I have so many deans is because I like them. I like the way they play, I like the way they look, I like the way they sound. Um, they've always had such a massive presence. Like I always remember seeing my first Dean. It was um, a friend of mine in high school and he was a few years older than I was and he was like the, the best guitarist in high school at the time and um, you know, whilst he was there. And he came one day with a Dean and I just saw the headstock from a window in the music room and I ran straight inside to see what guitar it was and I saw a black 79 series ML with a Floyd Rose and I think I was kind of hooked since. You know, after getting better at guitar and trying lots of guitars out, I eventually bought my first Dean and I was kind of hooked from there. I think Dean could do things better, such as if they had, a, if they had wood at the back of the neck, like that wooden feel. I like that a lot more than the gloss feel and even the satin feel. Uh, personally, I think that's the most comfortable comfortable feeling from behind the neck, but the fretboards are lovely. They're just just the right size for my hand. They just sit right with me, you know, when I'm sitting and um, they sound great. They look great and they've always just been absolutely solid when it comes to the build quality. I think nowadays Dean have slightly lost the mark as opposed to where they were 10 years ago. Um, I think they're I think they're doing things differently, but not in the way the market wants them to, and not really in the way that I want them to, um, for my kind of desires. I think Dean could do a little bit more to cater to, to the extreme metal scene, and I think that would help their company a lot more. Welcome to MTV Cribs. So in the fridge, we've got quite a lot of stuff. We normally keep sauces, up here we've got loads of chili sauce and mustard and Tabasco sauce and um, marmalade, which I don't eat. Um, we've got some yogurts there. Juices. Have lots of juices. You've got to be healthy. You can't eat all this like sugary crap all the time and fizzy drinks. Um, we've got kimchi. That's homemade kimchi that we make. Um, we've got some vegetables here. Uh, vegan cheese. Tofu here. We've got vegetables all in these drawers here. Um, more vegetables in there. Milk, more juices, coconut water, eggs, some Indian style pickles that are really good with curry, mozzarella cheese. Yeah, solid stuff. And then in the freezer, what we got in here? We have, yeah, samosas. That's cool, peas. I don't even know what's in here. <laughs> Frozen pizza, hot dogs, hash browns. These are quite good because they're like the McDonald's hash browns, but you're like super cheap. Um, what else have we got in here? Uh, just some burgers. I think there's some dumplings there. Yeah, for the most part, for the most part, it's quite healthy. Um, our family's vegetarian, so that's why there's no flesh. String gauges. Now, for most of my guitars in E standard, I go for 52 to 10s. Um, the only guitar that I have in E standard that doesn't use 52 to 10s is the Black ML here. That's 9 to 46. It just feels better with that guitar. For the 7 string, I use 10s to 59s. And for my guitar, well, this Black V here, and 
my other black V here, that's 11 to 56. One of them is in D standard, the other is C standard. And I strictly use the Dario strings. The best black metal picks are these. The Jim Dunlop Tortex Sharps. Now I specifically use the 1.35s. And the reason why the Tortex Sharps are the best picks is because they're comfortable and you get less pick noise when the, sh when the pick hits the string. And that's what I hate. I hate that like scratchy sound as well. Like I was watching a video where Niall were talking about what picks they use and they said they use these ones for the clarity. And after using them, I haven't looked back. So I've been using these for about or more than 10 years now. See, I asked this question to some colleagues and I was surprised when they didn't say samurai swords or Japanese katanas because they're tough, durable, lightweight, portable, and you can easily chop a zombie's head off with one of those things. Black metal was interesting and especially getting into it because um, over time, especially during high school, I slowly got into more aggressive and heavier, heavier music. Like it started with like Fallout Boy, then it went to Bullet For My Valentine, and then it went to Iron Maiden, and then straight from like Iron Maiden, I was listening to fucking Cryptosy and Nile. So going from there, I discovered, well, my cousin showed me Immortal and I was kind of hooked with, I think it was one of the songs of Sons of Northern Darkness. And I just thought it was amazing. And that's how I slowly got more and more into black metal. Um, it was either Sons of Northern Darkness or All Shall Fall, one of the one of the songs off those two albums. But yeah, that's what got me hooked and um, more into black metal style playing. And then from there, obviously, I was learning the songs, finding more bands and slowly tried to learn what I was listening to. The best roadmap is, is to understand your own pace because some people do learn guitar more quickly, some people don't. Um, I would say to understand your own pace and accept that you won't be able to play Emperor after picking up guitar after two or three weeks. It has to be paced. You have to first learn the basic fundamentals, how to hold a guitar, how to fret a guitar properly, how to change chords and learning the open chords and the bar chords and the power chords. You have to make sure this foundation is so strong before you start even thinking about trying to learn all of the black metal stuff because it would just make, it will just demotivate you because you, because it's like, okay, yes, you can read the tab, but can you truly understand what it is you're playing and what it requires of you and trying to play Emperor, Immortal, Gorgoroth, whatever band it is, when you've just started to learn guitar, you know, it's it's gonna be really hard because you need to learn the fundamentals of how to hold the guitar, like I just said, and how to fret properly and how to change chords and notes properly. And even picking, getting good at alternate picking and having a strong right hand for rhythms. So I would say, enjoy the process and sometimes going slowly gives you the best results. I guess if I was like turned into like cod suddenly, then I guess I'd just be like flapping on the floor, like just like a pathetic magic carp or something. <laughs> but if it was like, if I was turned into a, a shark or something, then it would be like that times 10 with more noise and probably like blood and, and stuff and this whole room could have been destroyed. I don't know, that's a tough one. Um, but I'd most, like, I'd most definitely be dead within 10 minutes because I'm not in water. Because Marshalls and Engels have the nicest sound when you're in the room, okay? They are the most satisfying amps to listen to. They're not hissy, they're not screechy. They're tight sounding, they're warm, they're aggressive and they work for almost everything except for like jazz playing or like super clean guitar stuff where fenders are generally best but i prefer marshalls and engels over over the other brands purely because they are not as clinical because 
I'm slowly losing interest in PVs and the more American sounding amps because they all just have this kind of clinical sound that I just don't like nor care for as as the days go by. It's like I would much rather have a slightly nastier, le less precise, some like you know sometimes a less precise guitar tone just because it's nastier, it feels grungier, dirtier, grittier, and Yes, PVs are good for low tunings, but so are Marshalls and Engels, and they have just this, they have this certain sweet spot that PVs don't have. Like, PVs will always sound good, but they will, but to me, they will never sound great, because they hurt when I use them, and they're designed for people who, who don't necessarily pick too hard and, and play in lower tunings and stuff, whereas I'm, I normally play in standard tunings. Um, I don't really play too much in lower tunings, and I pick really aggressively. So I don't need all this gain. I don't need all this hand-holding from an amp. I'd rather an amp be a little bit more difficult, but sweeter to dial in, and one that suits my playing more. <laughs> Drum program is the most annoying part of being a YouTuber, closely followed by editing, and the other one is the amount of filming you have to do. Drum programming is a nightmare, because I, I'm not a drummer, but I have to think like a drummer, and programming always takes longer than you want it to. You have to spend hours and hours and hours for it. It's one of the reasons why these kind of compilation videos that have a bit more production in them aren't so frequent because they take so much time. You know, all the drum programming takes so much time. And if you're trying to program Hellhammer or Frost or one of the like better drummers in black metal, it's even harder to program because you've got to listen out for every single little hit and I'd want to make all of these drum tracks as precise to the recordings as possible. I think Lugia, because I used to watch a lot of Pokemon 2000 and Lugia was like, like the absolute G in that film. So yeah, Lugia, that's quite a cool Pokemon. Anything and everything, because because what it because when I'm with different people sometimes it's different music playing um cuz it can go anything from 50 cent to Dr Dre to like K-pop like Mamamoo and even um even Espa sometimes and then it can go from like classic rock Guns N' Roses for example and then go straight into Dark Throne, and then it could go into like Cannibal Corpse, or it could go to Malthusian, then Thirteen Forty Nine, the, or even like some J Rock stuff, or you know whatever I find that's good. Basically, anything that I like. It's um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say no to everything, but over time I'm listening to less and less black metal because I find, I find most bands these days quite uninspiring to listen to and I normally like the black metal that I can't mimic basically bands like Nightbringer where I can't exactly figure out what's going on and it it requires a bit more listening and a bit more attention and even like 1349 riffs as well there's still some songs and riffs that I've been trying to work out for a very very long time so um yeah black metal is not really a priority to listen to these days um because most of the time now, when I do listen to music, it's just music from around the world that isn't, that isn't black metal. See? I'm not like Varg Vikanez. I would not eat these cornflakes straight away. I'm kind of in the middle because <laughs> So I'm kind of in the middle between Dark Throne and Burzum because Varg would have eaten these straight away when they're crispy and Fenris would have let, let it sit for a bit but I'm like in the middle, I'll just let these sit for a tiny bit and you see here, you got like those crispy ones at the top so I like it when it's like soft at the bottom and crispy at the top Tuning a guitar, that's quite annoying 
um, when your equipment breaks. That's also annoying. Uh, drum programming is very frustrating. Making YouTube videos can be quite frustrating. Um, when you, bits of your car breaks, that's annoying. Not being able to sleep, that's, um, that's quite frustrating. Um, when things don't go to plan. Um, difficult customers. You know, there's lots of things that can make you angry. The important thing is just to rise above it and just realize that, look, these things happen and some things are out of your control. They're very different because if you're in a band where everyone is on the same wavelength and wants the same thing and doesn't mess around, then it's great. And then there's also the the um, the community aspect of it. You know, you've got your band and they're also your very good friends and you all, all just hang out and have a good time together. The main difference is, is what you can control because Doing the solo black metal stuff or the solo music stuff, it's a lot easier to control what you're doing. There's less input from other people. So you have to kind of not only be your harshest critic, but also your biggest supporter. And it's about finding that balance, which I quite like because I'm very critical of my playing. Um, I'll say the, the most fun thing about being in a band is, is the company and the live shows because the solo music stuff, you can't really play live unless you get other musicians in. Sometimes the solo stuff does become more personal as well because it is all yourself. Um, whereas the band, you can have input from other people so there's more ideas thrown into the pot. And I'm, I like both. I like both. I think I've got to the point now where I've done the band thing for so long that I'm kind of okay with trying to do everything myself. Songwriting is, for what well, I would say, my biggest skill because that's what I've been doing for the longest time. You know, I, I spend less time focusing on my technique and focusing more on what's the next great riff that I can put into my songs, um, whether it be solo or band stuff. My approach to songwriting, it's, kind of, it's like I said in the black metal songwriting lesson, I think of the bigger picture. I've got this idea in my head of where I want the song to go how I want it to start and how I want it to finish. And then it's a case of finding the right riffs and bringing it all together. I find recording ideas on Logic really helpful because then I can just like record some riffs, piece some bits together and toy around with song structures and the riff structures and some of the ideas. Throw some more uh, little sections here and there, like little kind of like tail sections at the end of songs just to make the transitions but from riff to riff, be riff, to riff better. I find it so much easier to write songs when I have the end picture in mind. I know where I want the song to go. I know what kind of sections I want the song to have. That's my approach. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Because I'm very busy. I spend most days uh, at work and I spend most evenings teaching students. That of course goes into time I have for YouTube. I could record YouTube videos more, but I've realized that after pushing myself very, very hard for a, a good number of years, it's taken quite a bit out of me and working nonstop is not healthy. You can work hard, but working nonstop is very different. Uploads are infrequent because of my scheduling and I'm and I've decided to spend more time with myself and more, more time for myself. The reason being, I need a break. I need a break. It takes a while to do YouTube videos, even the short ones, even the quick ones. There's all the editing involved. There's a setup. There's thinking about what you have to say. Um, there's a lot more to it, to making YouTube videos. That's why videos are infrequent. You know, I have a, I have a busy work schedule, even if you exclude the day job. And I do try to fit YouTube in where I can, but it's more the case now where I have to allocate time to YouTube, such as today, um, where I've decided to take time out of today and just be like, okay, let's do a little bit more work and provide some content for you guys. I don't know when the next video will be out after this one, but I do have 
a set plan on what's going to come next and what I want to work on and what the next videos you will get. There's about four videos I have in mind right now and all of them will be released at some point. The purpose of this channel is for everyone who was like me because I was a 15 year old kid who was getting into black metal and I didn't know how to play or what to do. There was no kind of guide or teacher or someone saying, hey, these are black metal chords. Hey, these are evil chords. This is how you play this riff. This is how you play that riff. That really wasn't a thing when I was 15, 16, about 10 or you know, a bit more than 10 years ago now. So that's the reason I decided to create the channel because I knew there'll be more people like me who wanted content on how to play black metal and but also how to do it properly not like all the bad covers that were on youtube back then um, you know real proper thought out methodical relevant lessons you know lessons on songs that are played exactly like how the artists are lessons about the theory and the concepts and the ideas and the chords and the actual playing styles and the techniques on black metal and just provide all of this knowledge to people because there wasn't anything like that there wasn't anything like this before there wasn't like this YouTube guide as I've done now in the black metal series and all these riff lessons and stuff there wasn't anything like that before so I decided to do it myself because there is there was nothing and um, you know this channel is quite unique in the way it's delivered in um, in some of the methodology and the ideas and the concepts of the lessons and you know how to do things properly that's what this channel is about it's for the people out there who need someone to help them that's what this channel is for it's you know YouTube is like the new TV now but this is for the people who really kind of want to get serious with their playing rather than the people who just want to watch like meme videos or stuff it's a bit of a different take a uh, far more serious take on YouTube content and learning. Um, you know, a channel for the dedicated student who can apply the techniques in this channel, you know, you know, apply all the lessons and the techniques in this channel, put it into their own music and create stellar black metal. Because, like I said before, I'm, I'm finding new bands and I'm not very inspired. So this is my kind of gift to the world and the next generation of black metal musicians to come up and be like yo you know we're unique we have our own sound and we're doing things properly and we have our own identity rather than trying to be dark throne or one of the other bands for example this channel is for the next generation of black metal bands and guitar players and people who want to move forward in their learning So, as promised, I've decided to create a Discord server and to join, just look in the, look in the description below. Um, it will be free to join. I don't believe anyone should be paying for it and I want everyone to con contribute as much as they can and get in contact with me as possible because there could be so many ideas that you guys have and one of those ideas could be so beneficial for the channel, maybe it could be a new series for the channel. It could um, help other people as well. And of course, it'll be fun to have a community as well where we're talking about ideas, how to develop guitar playing, um, how to develop your own songs. You know, people have a chance to submit the music that they're making and people can critique. I think it'll be a very, very helpful environment. And of course, it'll be moderated by myself and uh, my friend Daryl, who does my mixes for the channel. So, you know, we want to make this as as healthy as environment as possible and supportive for the next generation of guitar players and even build a community that's very, very strong. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. It was quite a humble 10,000 subscriber special. Um, could have done something crazy, but I think something like this is just a little bit more honest and far more straightforward. I think we'll leave this crazy stuff once I have a bit more opportunity to do crazy stuff and um, yeah thank you for everyone again for supporting the channel thank you for 
everyone who wants to see myself and the channel go forward and here's to the next milestone in YouTube subscribers which is 100,000. No idea when that's going to happen but we'll see.